Welcome back to the UEA podcast. I am your host, Elle Edwards, and you're back for a brand new episode. This one was recorded live in the Blue House. If you join us every week, you'll notice for the last two weeks we had a break for Easter, but we are back. We are recording this live. So consider this your reminder. Uh, we do, at the end of every episode, there's a little prompt that we get to explore together in the Blue House. And I would love for you to come and join us. UEA.com forward slash join uh, is where you can where you can find out more and do that. We are also, uh, later this week, releasing the theme for May's one day event. That too is included in your Blue House membership. So there's lots of really good reasons to join uh, and lots of fun stuff to do together. That said, I know it's not for everybody. So I am excited that you get to enjoy this podcast episode. If you're not already subscribed, please do subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. And finally, if you know somebody who would benefit from this episode, please do share it with them. Uh, I don't know who I don't know, but you know who you know. So if you get nudged to share this with somebody, uh, please do that. And I look forward to sharing this episode with you. With that said, let's get cracking with today's episode. Anyway, today's episode of the podcast is probably the least prepared episode I have ever done. And it takes me completely out of my comfort zone. I have zero notes and I'm not very happy about it either. If you remember, we have for season four of the podcast, I have been going on walks with my dog and things have been happening and there's been stories and we've been sharing them. And we have for the last couple of weeks had pre-recorded episodes. We haven't done them live in the Blue House because we had the Easter break. We are now back. And so I was, OK, what are we doing, God? Like, where's what's the story? What's going on? Crickets. I was like, OK. That's not very helpful. Uh, and I was like, well, so I took the dog out this morning and because uh, we were getting a bit desperate. I mean, she needed to go out anyway. But I was like, what's going on? Nothing like nothing like nudges at all. Instead, I started noticing random things like there's um, some of you will know. Let's if I had to pick a favorite season, spring is probably my favorite season. Probably if you ask me in the summer, I might tell you the summer is my favorite. And if you ask me in autumn, I'll say autumn. But right now in spring, spring is my favorite season because I love the blossoms. I also love, you know, after the winter when things are a bit sort of dark and dreary and apologies for, for people who are living in a part of the world where you don't have the distinct seasons like we do here. <laughs> we get lots of cold and lots of sunshine at various times. But you, you, you get the idea of what it looks like after a long, cold winter, uh, you know, seeing those first promises of, of growth is exciting. And also as well, quite transparently, blossoms are fun because it gives me a chance every year to retell my kids, kids the story of me when I was a little girl. So my granddad, you in the blue house, I don't think I've heard this story. So I'm telling this teeny tiny story uh, for the first time ever to people who've never heard it before. But my kids, every year go, yeah, mum, we know you told us. So when I was a little girl, my granddad took me for a walk and said, um, oh, Eleanor, look at those pretty flowers. Those of you who know me as Elle, which is pretty much everybody, Elle is short for Eleanor. Um, in case you wondered, some of you know that. So, oh, Eleanor, look at those pretty flowers. Dem's not flowers, granddad's Dem's blossoms. And every spring, my children hear this story. I have resisted telling it to them this year. I've been very good. But we'll randomly go, oh, look at the blossoms. And then I'll tell them my blossom story. I mean, they've been with me for 19, 17 and 15 years now. You imagine that story gets old. Uh, <laughs> so one of the reasons why I do like spring is the blossoms. They are beautiful. And we're really fortunate that in our back garden, our next door neighbour has got a tree with some blossomy type flowers. Uh, I mean, they're not traditional cherry blossoms, but it's got little blossomy flowers and they sort of sprinkle off and it looks like confetti. And I know some people, are like, oh, it's so messy. It is a bit messy. But I think it looks really pretty, too. And then my other neighbour on the other side, I've just remembered, has got one at the front. So as I go out to the car, there's some more confetti. I just love it. It's beautiful. So anyway, I was out walking the dog and instead all I noticed was this random blossom tree. Well, I don't even know if it was a tree, more like a sort of shrub, but it was a, a thing that looked kind of blossomy. And I never noticed it before. And I walked past that patch loads of times. I was like, hmm, OK, what's that? And it's, so I just kept noticing stuff. And I was like, yeah, OK, God, what's going on? And more than anything, I kept getting this reminder of that. And we kind of touched on this a little bit 
uh, in some of the training that we've been doing in the on a Friday in the prophetic warrior training. And I think we touched upon it in the in the one day event as well. Uh, incidentally, for those of you who are in the Blue House who weren't able to join us for the one day event, uh, the recordings are up. And for those of you on the podcast who are not members of the Blue House, you can come and join us in the Blue House if you so desire and watch it, because we did explore uh, a real rest and the unforced rhythms of grace. And it was wonderful, uh, if I do say so myself. But this idea, more than anything, I felt this nudge from God to stop putting him in a box and this reminder that he is speaking all of the time in many different ways. Now, we've ex we've explored before that this word speaking is really quite limited. You know, speaking implies something that comes out of our mouth and then goes into our ears or comes out of our mouths and goes into other people's ears. You know, it's a it's a speech type thing involves sound. God is not limited by sound. Uh, and as we explored, I oh, this is. <laughs> In my mind right now, I'm trying to remember where this came from. But God is reminding me that the only box that he is in is the one he climbs in to meet us. I don't remember if he said that in one of the love notes that we've had already or one of the love notes that's to come. You'll have to read them and check and find out. But at some point in the last week, he's been reminding me the only box you'll find me in is the one that I climb in to meet you. And I really feel like we have this invitation to invite God to open all of our senses for new ways to communicate with him. So I guess communicate is a better word than speak or hear, communicate. Uh, and I also had, I was, as I was driving uh, to pick up, oh yeah, because just to add insult to injury, as if I kind of didn't already realize it, I then came back. So I had quite a fun morning, but it's been busy. I went to do boxing at my friend's, my friend's garage brilliant loved it would you like coffee oh yes I'd love coffee went and had coffee had a chat I'm like in the back of my mind I'm thinking I still don't know what we're doing for the podcast so I got back I had a shower I got changed I had about an hour to spare and then I had a text message from my daughter saying can you come and pick me up from school I finished for the day I'm like yes I can my sweet and I remember whilst at the same time going I'm really not going to go into this podcast episode very prepared and God was going it's okay I've got you I've got this I'm speaking in so many different ways and I was reminded as well of something that Jill those of you who are with me in the Blue House know Jill people who don't who aren't in the Blue House who haven't met her yet Jill is a, one of the Blue House members and she shared something in in one of the rooms where she talked about she felt she felt nudged around this idea that what if every interaction we have is like a prayer? So every interaction. So when my daughter texts me and say, can you come and pick me up? I mean, humanly speaking, I'm like, <sighs> but then I report. I was just thankful then that actually her timing was beautiful because I hadn't already started here on Zoom. It was it was perfect timing. But what if every single interaction we have is actually a prayer? And actually, if we believe in a God that sees everything, is involved in everything, is interested in everything, then actually every single thing that comes out of our mouth is part of talking to God, even when we're not quite realizing it. And so the, the real invitation, I think, and the bit that we're gonna to explore together in the Blue House in a little while, is the different ways that God is communicating with you uh, and the invitation to communicate with you in a new way. We're gonna do something that's very uncomfortable for me and I suspect will be very uncomfortable for, for possibly other people too, depending on how you're wired, silence. Some of you know I'm not very good at silence, but I had this nudge. And this actually is your plaything for those of you who are following along on the podcast who are not in the Blue House. With that reminder, you can do this live with us on Zoom if you come and join us, uia.com forward slash join. Um, <laughs> but your, play, your homework, your plaything is to sit and you're going to put a timer on for five minutes and you're going to sit and just simply be and listen and notice. Now I sort of like, okay, God, are we going to put some music on to sort of create atmosphere? No, no. Like, really? I like music. Music's great. He said, yes. He said, but sometimes, Elle, you get distracted by, because I listen to a lot of instrumental stuff and some, some instrumental stuff is based on a song that I know, for example. So then I find myself getting distracted by what song it is uh, or, you know, going off on a tangent that way. Instead, we are going to sit or stand or lie down or any of those things and just simply be for five minutes. Now I know that's not necessarily the easiest. I've already, already called myself out. I know that I don't find it easy to be quiet. I will quite easily uh, get distracted, which is why music is great for me. However, I really felt this nudge that we're gonna do it and we're gonna try it with this idea of exploration and trying stuff out. Now you might not, you might, you know, 
do this and find, oh, I never want to do that again. Um, that's fine. I would say don't do it again unless you get nudged again by, by God. You might sit there and find that your mind goes off in, in so many different directions. That's fine. Notice the directions and, okay, God, what are you saying? God, what are you communicating? What's your heart right now? That's ultimately about what this is, what this is about. Uh, one, of the, one of the things that's been fascinating to me, and I've shared this with you a little bit here in the Blue House, I think, is so I do a lot of journaling with Holy Spirit. It's really easy and it, it, it sort of flows quite naturally. And then at the same time, I was having this conversation with him around different ways. And so uh, did I tell you that I started drawing? I can't remember if I did or started drawing again. Maybe I did, maybe I didn't. doesn't matter. <laughs> um, that's another story for another time. Um, but so I had this nudge at the end of last week to get my pencil and my notebook and close my eyes. And my pen was on the paper, close my eyes and then see what comes to mind. Now, that's quite tricky for me. Some of you know that I'm not. I don't know what the expression is when you don't see pictures very easily. Um, it does. I don't like I, I think I shared with you before. I can close my eyes. And if I'm told to picture my front door, even though my front door is quite distinctive, it's a TARDIS. It should be easy to picture. It's really hard for me to picture that. If I was to try, if you told me to close my eyes and picture my husband, I know what he looks like. But to try and do that in my mind is difficult. So I'm like, OK, God, just start with something that's really hard already. He's like, well, just do it anyway. So I close my eyes. My pay, my my pen was like near the paper or my pencil was near the paper. And then he said, right. So and then just wait and see what comes to mind and then draw. OK, so we ended up I had this sort of like cuboid type thing in mind. And I managed with my eyes closed. I was amazed when I opened them, managed to draw a cuboid that all, it was almost completely perfect, even though I couldn't see where the pen was going. There was a couple of little bits were, were, that weren't quite right. I was like, OK, what's that about? He said, we'll get to that in a minute. I was like, OK, then we did it again. So I closed my eyes and this time it was kind of like a sort of a tunnel-y type thing. And, it, and I was nudged to draw these circles round and round and round and round. And afterwards, I'm like, OK, what's that about? And then he told me and there was a whole we explored it and there was a whole load of different love notes that came out from those two random little doodles. My point is this. I want us to be open to all of the different ways that God wants to communicate with us. I want you to explore new things because none of this has to be a thing that you do forever. And at the same time, we don't want to get stuck in a rut because the other reminder that quite ironically came through the Holy Spirit love notes. They're released daily and sometimes they're written the day before. The ones this week were written last week. And it was like this thing that God shared last week was speaking to me where I was right now today with that reminder to stop striving. So as I was like waiting for, okay, what's the story for the podcast? Because, you know, we're on a schedule. Stop striving. Just relax and just listen. I'm like, okay. Uh, and so that really is the reminder for you through this episode uh, and the invitation for you, I feel. We, we've explored before. God is always speaking. You know, he's not holding out on you. You might go through seasons where you're having to seek him a little bit more. Uh, and those are those can be stretching and it can be chances, opportunities to, to really deepen that relationship. But he's always speaking to you, whether it whether you realize it or not. So then as I was out walking um, and we are wrapping up now, don't worry. Um, I'm nowhere, I'm no idea how long this episode has got. But anyway, Psalm 19. I didn't know it was Psalm 19. I'll be transparent. Um, but it was that expression about um, all of nature. Um, speaking and so I then googled bible verse um, day after day, day after day they pour forth speech and because the internet is brilliant I was born for the internet I'm just saying the internet's brilliant and it told me it was Psalm 19 so I opened it and I'm going to read it to you now this is Psalm 19 I'm reading it from the NIV the heavens declare the glory of God the skies proclaim the work of his hands day after day they pour forth speech night after night they reveal knowledge they have no speech they use no words no sound is heard from them Yet their voice goes out into all the earth, their words to the ends of the world. In the heavens, God has pitched a tent for the sun. It is like a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, like a champion rejoicing to run his course. It rises at one end of the heavens and makes its circuit to the other. Nothing is deprived of its warmth. I'm going to pause there because there's a load more verses to read. You can read the rest yourself. However, I got um, nudged around. There's a Years ago, this is a Psalm of David, in case you're wondering. Years ago, I remember reading a Psalm that talked about, forgive me for the stuff I do wrong, even when I don't realize I'm doing it. And I remember coming across that verse years ago and couldn't find it. Would you believe it? This is an aside, but it's in this Psalm. If you fast forward 
down to verse 12. But who can discern their own errors? Forgive my hidden faults. Keep your servant also from willful sins. May they not rule over me. Then I will be blameless, innocent of transgression. And it was, <laughs> I have lost track of the number of the times over the years where I've been like, where is that verse, God? Because I do remember it was in the Psalms. I mean, I'll be transparent. I didn't Google it very often, but I was, it was one of those ones I couldn't remember enough of the words that I could Google it and find it. And in fact, I think actually the first time I came across this psalm was probably before Google was even invented. But how funny is it when we're recording an episode which is talking about just relax, God's got it. He's talking to you all of the time. He answered a prayer that I've asked off and on for probably the best part of 10 or 15 years. It just tickled me and amused me. And yes, I'm going to write down Psalm 19 and stick it somewhere I don't remember. Because I just thought it was it was just it just it just amused me you know I was like wow that like I didn't even expect to find it in there and yet that the the way that that popped the opening of that psalm popped into my mind and it tied in with with this episode because if all of creation is declaring the glory of God why wouldn't why wouldn't God also make use of all of creation to talk to us and to communicate with us as well that was the reminder but then I had this note keep reading and I got to the middle bit like the middle bit is about how good God's laws are and how beautiful he is and the statutes of the Lord trustworthy blah, 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 blah. all good stuff but not relevant to this episode so I was like okay I will keep reading but I don't know how it fits and then we got to the verse I was like oh, wow so I guess the the side note or the side encouragement for you is those things that are on your heart those things that maybe you've been asking him about that maybe you haven't had an answer on yet don't don't give up don't think that he doesn't hear you. The answer might come from, from ways and, and means and areas that are unexpected. But I wouldn't have had the answer to that long standing request if I hadn't followed the nudge to keep reading the, the psalm. And so, yes, God will, he could have dropped that, that verse to me via an email. You know, I've shared with you before the the, the waking up at 4.17 and then how it led me to 1 John 4.17 and then 1 John, 1 John 4.17 was in loads of books. So he does have, it, that does happen, but sometimes it's simply about you following the nudges. I say simply, it's one of those things that's simple, but not always easy. I recognize that too, but it just, it was, it's an aside, but it just amused me in a good way. You know, he is so much better at communicating than we did, than we give him credit for. Uh, and so that's what I have for you for this episode. Remember, podcast folks, your little play thing when you're ready. Also, notice any resistance that comes up. If you're like, oh, I can't possibly do that now. I'm far too busy. Say to God, well, if not now, when? Because one of the really good questions, one of the best, from my perspective, one of the best questions, actually, there were lots of good questions, but one of the best questions that came out from Sunday was when, you know, if we've been given nudges to do things, but we don't know how to fit them in, we go, okay, God, You've, you've nudged me to do this thing. When am I going to do it? And you can ask God that question in relation to this play thing as well. If you feel like I've got this to do and that to do and I can't do it, then you say, okay, if, if, if not now, God, when? When, am I, when, when will I do this? You know, help me find the time to do it. And push into that resistance. If you're like, eh, I'll just do it in my head or I'll just do it later. I would really encourage you to do it. Uh, even if you just try it one time. Like I say, for some of us, silence is quite difficult. Um, we can still explore these things, you know, it doesn't have to be something that you do forever. I'm going to close this in prayer for the purposes of the podcast. We are then going to take five minutes of um, silence and then we're going to see where we go from then, uh, from there. Uh, but just for podcast people, I just want to thank you for being here. I know that your experience of this is different to what we have uh, in the Blue House. And of course, I've forgotten when I started recording that we're also sending this to YouTube. And I've been quite fidgety today. So people have been watching this on YouTube. Apologies for the fidgetiness. Fidgetiness? Fidgetiness? Fidgetness? Is that even a word? I don't know. We've already, before, behind the scenes, we've already had a conversation about my hair and the fact that this bit is getting on my nerves. And if I'd remembered that we were going to take this through to YouTube as well, I would have ignored the bit that was getting in my eyes and we wouldn't have had a fidgety video, but I forgot. But it's an example of done being better than perfect. So your bonus reminder for anybody who really struggles with, oh, I can't do it yet because it's not quite right. Done is better than perfect. If you're meant to do this thing, do it, put it out there anyway, because you can always try again a different way another time. You don't have to do these things perfect all the time. Perfection for some of us is a real something that we can struggle with. It can stop us in our tracks. 
And so if there is something that you're being nudged to do and you're struggling because you want to make it perfect, stop. Just do it anyway. And if you're not sure how or when, ask God that too. That's your little bonus bit. But let me close this in prayer. And then we are going to be silent together for five minutes and then see where we go from there. Father God, I just want to thank you. Thank you that you do climb into these boxes that we find ourselves in and meet us exactly where we are at. I thank you for the podcast episode that took me out of my comfort zone that had nothing but was all you. And that reminder that you are always communicating to us. And now as we come to spend you know these moments hearing you you know and again with the widest possible experiencing you being with you with that silence i just pray that you would help each of us to hear your hearts you know, that is the purpose of all of this is is to just a deepen relationship with you you know there are there will be times when we are quiet with you when you share things with us to share with other people and that's glorious and wonderful but we don't do that as some like clever party trick or just to you know make ourselves look clever all of it is for us to hear your heart and then point other people to you. And so I just thank you that you are communicating with us all of the time. I thank you for the nudges. I thank you for helping us to follow the nudges. Holy Spirit, we thank you for the work that you do in each of our lives. And Jesus, we thank you for that demonstration of your love on the cross. Three in one, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. I just pray now, lead us on as we in the Blue House spend this time together. For the folks listening on the podcast, as they do this homework for themselves, wherever they may be. Uh, I pray that you would help still any nonsense that might come up and help them to hear from you. And for those people on the podcast who are getting nudged to come and join us, join, help them to know that when is the right time, uh, because you're doing some exciting stuff here. And I just thank you for, for everything you're doing, the way that you're leading us and guiding us. In Jesus' name, I thank you. Amen. Thank you for watching today's episode of the podcast. My hope and prayer is it's been a real blessing to you. Don't forget to do your plaything, your homework. Uh, don't put it off. I know you might not be able to do it right now, right now, but make sure that you ask Holy Spirit, well, if not now, when? Uh, and make time for it and you know, hear what it is the Holy Spirit wants to share with you. With that reminder as well, if you're someone who's like, hmm, I hear God, I don't know how to do that. I would encourage you to download a copy of the Yuya book. There'll be links for the Yuya book in the show notes. Uh, and it, it expands upon what you know, Yuya, how to hear God's heart. Uh, and there's lots and lots, packed full of lots and lots of questions that you can ask God. Um, and you know, ask him expecting an answer. That is the, the IER in you, intentional expectant relationship. If you have Jesus uh, as your savior, you have Holy Spirit inside of you, you can hear from God. So if that's brand new, if you think, oh, I did not know this, I would encourage you to get the book. Uh, and finally, uh, I love sharing the you, your message. I love doing the podcast and I would be delighted if you or someone you know uh, has an audience ready to be you, yeah, you in intentional expectant relationship, please do uh, consider inviting me to come and share whether it's your podcast, your event, uh, summit, whatever that looks like. Go to youia.com forward slash speaking. Uh, and there's a page on there which tells you more information and gives you some details about how to invite me. Thank you for considering that. In the meantime, I look forward to coming back next week with a brand new episode for you. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. And I think that's it. Have yourself a wonderful rest of the week. Take care. Bye-bye.